that we all need to be united to be strong, right? Then we find that we need to do things together as a body and not as an individual. Now in Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 15 to 16, the Bible tells us how God has made our body to be so well compacted and so uh, what we call fit it, frame up in a manner whereby it can be able to move. Okay? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, the Bible says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Take note of verse 16, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that every joint supply according to the effective working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto edifying of itself in love. Now every joint fitly joined together. Now uh, this is a ball joint. Okay? Uh, I don't have a frozen shoulder, I still like you can do it. Right? Some of them having frozen shoulder, they just can leave it up this way. Right? I seen the other day brother uh, one of our brother's son had a four broken arm and uh, he couldn't tie his tie. Right? The tie had to move this way and he needs somebody to help. But God has made us whereby the ball joint goes in so well fitted that you don't find any problem with it. When you move and if your if you move your arm or swing your arm and you find oh, there's some problem with your arm already, right? But God did not make it this way. There's a three inside there, it helps us, and that is how we should look at our arm with a ball joint as in the church where all members should learn to work together along the same line. Coming back to the locus the Bible tells us that when the locust comes in group, it affects the whole land of Egypt. So if the church here moves in groups, you know what will happen to the community? In Acts chapter 17 verse 6, these that turn the world upside down are here. This community will be known as the community that turn evil upside down. If you move in groups. And let me suggest to you <coughs> how to move in group. Let's not go everywhere, but let's go into one garden after another. This month we attack one garden. The word attack. <laughs> right? Next month we go to another garden. Following month another garden. We give them tracks week after week. <coughs> At the end of the 12 months, you have completed 12 gardens. Let's be determined. Let's look into it as a program of the church. And then the church community, the community around the church will know that, oh, this Evo Church of Christ, they have been here. On the day of judgment, God will ask. We can safely say, Lord, we have done our part. Our duty we have carried out. The community has not taken it in good manner. Isn't it wonderful that we know that we have done something? Rather than on that day, Lord, I come empty handed. I'm sorry I didn't do anything. What would the Lord say to us? Look at the grasshopper devastating because they work in the group, in the team spirit. Right. Let's come to the last part of the end uh, of the, this is the creature called the spider. <coughs> the spider, in as much as the Bible says, they can be found in the king's home or king's palace. Right? <coughs> it goes on to tell us that for us as Christians, whether the person is from the rich family or even from the poor family, we need to go and preach. We need to bring the gospel to them. We can't go into the king's palace, then we can be able to get someone else to go into the king's palace. The gospel is for all. The gospel is for those who are rich and those that are poor, right? Now, poor Paul, the apostle, went to the community, to the poor, to the multitude, he also preached in the king's palace, that is Caesar's palace, when he was in prison in Rome, he actually shared the good news. Now some of us 
may come from different of different uh, profession. Lawyer, you have a group of people who are in the law. Most of the time, who can reach them? Probably you are. Doctor, likewise. IT specialists, engineers, contractors, you will reach your own community. Now, if they refuse to accept it, you have done your duty to reach out to them. And therefore, the spider may weave a very nice web to trap the housefly or any other any, any other insect. There are times whereby no insect comes. Well, it's not his problem. His problem is to trap so that he can have something, right? So our work is to preach the word of God. Whether the person responds or not is up to the person concerned. The important thing is for us to share the word of God, right? So, in conclusion, we find that the ponies or the uh, badger, they learn to depend on God. So I want to encourage each one of us to learn to depend on God. Number two, the locusts, they learn to work together as a group. They cooperate one with another. And the last one, the spider, they work among those that are rich as well as among those that are not so. All in all, we do see Agro making mention that these creatures are small but very wise. I don't know whether they have brain or not, but if they do have, it is probably one over a billion of our size, but they know what to do. God has given us intelligence, God has given us wisdom. If we think we are lacking wisdom, let us remember James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of us lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not, that means doesn't hold back. God gives to us, but we must pray and ask of him. So this is my Bible class lesson, and I hope that uh, in some way it has benefited each one of us. Small but wise creatures that God has created for us to learn from. Thank you very much.